Hi everyone, my name is Nina Devine, and today we're going to learn how to build fairy houses. First, let's talk about fairies. So, some of you might have seen Tinkerbell in a movie before. Maybe you read this book, Fairyopolis, or maybe you've even seen this painting. Fairies are everywhere, in books, movies, and TV shows, and all around us. The first thing to know about fairies is that they're small. If you hold up your pointer finger, fairies actually are not too much bigger than your finger. This is something we want to keep in mind when we're building our fairy house. We don't want to make it too big, and we also don't want to make it too small. We want to make it just the right size. Fairies are also magical. They have lots of magical powers, including flying, and they use their powers to protect the outside and act as guardians of nature. What I mean by guardians of nature is that they keep the outdoors safe and healthy so that you and I and all the other animals that live in nature can continue to enjoy it. Fairies also love living in houses, especially houses that were built for them by children, which is why we're going to learn how to build great fairy houses that fairies will want to live in today. Also, fairy magic makes them invisible to adults like your parents and I. This is very important. When you're outside and building your fairy house, I want you to be looking very closely, because you just might see a fairy. Fairies also love spending time with their fairy friends. Let's learn about some of the creatures that you might find while you're outside building a fairy house. First, we have a toad over here. We also have a snail. Snails carry their homes on their backs. We also have a ladybug and a luna moth, which both fly just like the fairies. And we also have a lovely newt. One thing that all of these animals have in common besides living outside is that they're also all very small. One of the beautiful things about nature is that lots of tiny animals can live in a really small area. So if you don't have a big backyard, or if you don't have a backyard at all, don't worry. You can find lots of fairy friends just by going outside. Now let's learn how to build a good fairy house. While we're building a fairy house, we want to act as guardians of nature just like the fairies. How do we act as guardians of nature? Let's talk about it. One of the first things to know when building a fairy house is that we only want to take what we need. As an example, let's say that you're building a fairy house and you found a pile of 10 pine cones, but you only need two. You should only take two pine cones and leave the rest behind for someone else. We're also going to try not to pick anything that's green or alive. We want to be respectful of nature while we're building a fairy house, and generally, we're respectful of nature by leaving it alone and letting things grow and not picking leaves off of trees or flowers that haven't bloomed yet or things like that. We're also going to try to use materials from nature. This can be hard if you don't have a large backyard or access to a lot of woods, but try your best and be creative. I'm sure you'll come up with something. You also want to use your imagination. This is the time to build the wildest fairy house of your dreams, or even a whole fairy village. You could build things like a pool, or maybe a two-story ladder. One thing that I like to do when I'm building a fairy house is think about things in my own house, like my bed and my table and chairs, and try and recreate that in fairy form. So, now that we've talked about what makes a good fairy house, let's look at some examples. This is a huge, beautiful fairy village here. They have a lovely stone pathway and some moss, and it looks like a house made out of sticks here. Wow, this one is incredible. This one is a bit smaller, but still amazing. I really like how they used pine cones and leaves to decorate their doorway. I also like how they used the tree as the base. And this is a fairy house that I made recently. I also used the tree roots as the base for my construction, and then I used some pine cone chips to build a stone path, and some flowers that I found on the ground as some decoration, and then I also made a little table using a rock. So those are some ideas of things you could do while building a fairy house. Alright, now it's time for a brief activity before we get outside. I really want you to be learning how to use your senses while we're outside. This is important so that we can connect more deeply with nature while we're building our fairy house. So we want to engage as many of our senses as possible. The first thing that we can do is touch things. So I have some materials that I collected outside to show you guys what you could use while building a fairy house. First I have a feather which was very soft. 
and also a couple different kinds of pine cones. One important thing to know is that we always want to wash our hands after we've been outside and touched everything. We can also smell things. Here are a couple different pieces of bark that I collected and a picture of me smelling it. It smelled very tasty to me. You should go outside and smell some for yourself. We can also use our powers of observation while we're outside. Here are some dried flowers I collected that could be used as a decoration. I also have some lichens here. Look at the color variation between the two. The lichen on the right is a lot more blue, while the lichen on the left is a lot more green, but they're both lichens. I thought that was really interesting. And here are some insect marks that an insect made on some bark. This looks beautiful to me. I love all the lines and wavy designs in it, and the patterns that the insect made. I want you, you all to be using your powers of observation while we're outside. It's these kinds of small details that will make your fairy house very special. Lastly, we can listen. Here's a brief video I made about how to whistle with an acorn cat. Hi guys, my name is Nina, and today I'm gonna teach you how to whistle with an acorn cat. So first, find an acorn cat. Make sure it's not cracked or anything. Then you're gonna take your thumbs and put them together so that they make a V and that there's a little triangle on top of the acorn like this. Then you're gonna take your thumb, you're gonna take your top lip and put it right above your knuckles, sort of right on your top lips, and you're gonna put your bottom lip on your knuckles like I'm doing right here. And then you're gonna try and blow sort of down into uh, in between your fingers like this. And it takes some practicing, so don't be discouraged if you don't get it the first time. And that's how you whistle with an acorn cap. I hope you guys enjoyed that demonstration. So congratulations, you guys are all now fairy house building experts. That's awesome. Now you're ready to go outside and make your own. So just remember to be creative, use your imagination, have fun, and look closely. Fairies are everywhere. And lastly, if you want to know more, go to IthacaChildrensGarden.org.